I now look to Oshrat Kotler to close the case for the proposition. Good evening. First, uh, let me take this opportunity in thanking you for inviting me. It's a great honor speaking in front of you this evening for me. Uh, actually, you made me want to go back to my university years. It's incredible. And young lady over there, you touched my heart. You're so brave. So, can one separate the art from the artist? A profound question, indeed. Especially for me, as I'm a true ambassador to the arts and believe that an artist has been gifted with an ability so unique, so ethereal, that for those who are not artistically inclined, such as us, the commoners, <laughs> it leaves us with a feeling of awe. One could suggest that a gift as unique as this should be above any earthly rules or limitations, that it should be left alone to flourish in an arena of artistic freedom. I think we can all agree that good art, arts at all, deserves and needs freedom. But can artists be freed of any moral judgments? What if the artist is inhuman? What if they abuse people, inflict pain, or even cause permanent damage to others? Should we continue to admire their work, put them on a pedestal, encourage them to continue with their artistic creativity? On one hand, what will we lose as society by setting moral boundaries to the artist? Would we still have art at all? On the other hand, where do we draw the line when it comes to limitation on freedom? Not only artistic freedom, but any form of freedom. In order to address these profound issues, we need to reflect, I believe, on the purpose of art, the role it has within society, and then ask ourselves, what is the purpose of human society at all? Why was it established in the first place? The first signs of art, of beautiful cave wall drawings, were found to exist in the Stone Age some 40,000 years ago. Was this essential for survival? Researchers cannot determine. But what about modern society? Does humanity need art in order to survive? Can we go on living without it, for example? The answer is, of course we can. We can go on living, loving, bringing up our children without art. But we choose to embrace it because it inspires us. It gives us pleasure. It helps us to express ourselves. Society needs art because it transcends us to a higher level of existence. I believe that it was Oscar Wilde who claimed that through art, and only through art, we can protect ourselves from the severe dangers of existence. No doubt a monumental quote. But what if the danger is evoked by the artist himself? So once again, when should we separate the art from the artist? Where is the line of acceptance and forgiveness for any immoral behavior? Or maybe there should be no line at all. Let me use at this point quite an extreme example. Ludwig van Beethoven was a musical prodigy, but with an unpleasant disposition. Those that encountered him described him as rude, impolite, and intolerant to others, including fellow musicians. Not really a character that you would choose as a friend. Regardless of this, we admire his work, his creations, and have been celebrating his music for the past two centuries already. Richard Wagner, on the other side, was a brilliant composer too. Even so, he was boycotted in Israel for decades due to his anti-Semitic views, the close connections his family had with the Nazis, and the fact that his music was embraced and valued by the Nazi regime. This also applied to Richard Strauss, who had an official role in the Third Reich. So why are we able to separate the art from the artist in the case of Beethoven, but not in the case of Wagner or Strauss? In order to answer this question, 
we need to go back to my initial question. Why was society created at all? The challenge of human society as portrayed by Jean-Jacques Rousseau in The Social Contract is, and I quote, to find a form of association which will defend and protect with the whole common force the person and goods of each associate and within each, while uniting himself with all, may still obey himself alone and remains as free as before. Thus come to exist the social contract in the civil state that preserves and protects the individual by substituting justice for instinct in his conduct and giving his actions morality. Society was creator in order to protect the individuals from the dangers of nature, but also from the dangers of human nature. Not now, I'm sorry. <laughs> Human beings in the wild savannah needed each other in order to survive. In today's modern society, people need protection from other people too. Rousseau was the first to acknowledge that. So if we agree that this is one of the first fundamental functions of society, we should in fact reject any human behavior that goes against this theory. So it's true, Beethoven was a rude and vulgar person who probably suffered from a bipolar um, disorder. Van Gogh lost his mind. Other artists can be labeled as eccentric, antisocial, or even estranged from society. Nevertheless, as long as they don't cross over the line and breach the basic human contract, we may savour and rejoice their art and creations. This is why I am able to enjoy Beethoven's magnificent creations. Yet on the other hand, as a daughter of a Holocaust survivor, I am unable to listen to the music, magnificent as it may be, of composers who believe, for example, in the final solutions of the Jews. An artist that breaches this contract, that endangers the freedom and safety of member of society regardless of the religion, faith, beliefs, or, break, or background by a direct action, and this is very important, only by a direct action, should lose its place in society together with the privileged platform of which he presents his creativity and art, and along with this, the power we attribute to it, unless, he regrets his action. Yes, apology can be accepted. So as far as the Me Too movement, we should follow the same logic. Any artist that abuses, harasses, or attacks another person should not be embraced by society, neither should their creation, period. It is true, it is very true, that art transcends us to a higher level of existence but let us exist safely first. Our first obligation as member of society is to defend and protect with the whole common force the person and good of each associate, as Rousseau claimed more than 200 years ago. Artist, as fundamental and essential part of our society, should follow the same obligations. The greater the success, the higher their obligation stands. In their privileged position, they become gatekeepers for the safe existence of others, preferably a loving existence. This is the epitome of our society. If we will not exclude artists who harm others, we will lose the very basic reason of existing as society at all. Thank you.